Delano, I wanted to talk to you about this crazy video I saw on the Shade Room. I got a smile on my face, and I really shouldn't because the video actually disgusted me. But it's a, a guy with seven kids, seven mamas, and he's defending his, seven, his irresponsible behavior. Let's watch the video, and then we'll both respond you calling me a deadbeat because I tell them I was being irresponsible yet not wearing protection but I always tell uh, these women that I got pregnant that I do not want to be a father to these children and I offer to pay for the abortion majority of times they'll either take the abortion or they'll take a plan B but only these seven have kept these children but the crazy thing about it is they want me to be responsible for some children I told them I did not want. So for some years now, some of them been trying to get in contact with me, access denied, because I, I don't really know why you're trying to get in contact with me. I didn't told you I did not want them kids. So don't expect me to be responsible financially, emotional, spiritually, mentally, or physically with some kids I do not want. And I don't give a fuck what nobody think about it. You're not gonna force children up on me. Yeah, we both made the decision to lay down and have intercourse. We both was irresponsible about the decisions we made that night. Yeah, I could have pulled out, but I didn't. And I ain't care to pull out because I'm not the one that gonna have to carry a baby for nine months. It's the woman. In my opinion, women should be more careful on who they sleep with because you're gonna be like one of my baby mamas trying to find me so I can financially support a kid I didn't told her or them I did not want. Another thing is these just jump offs. These are the type of women that I ain't even had to do nothing for. The bad minimum, but they gave me access to their body and they think I wanna be a, a father to a child for one of them? Wait, I don't even have no type of love for these women. How do they expect me to love these children? Before y'all say, oh, he irresponsible, he a deadbeat, he don't take accountability. Yeah, I do. I just don't give a fuck. You ain't gonna force these children on me when I told you I ain't want them. Yeah, I can offer to a pay for abortion, but at what point can I force a woman to go get an abortion? I cannot. Delano, to me, this is the end result of this equality movement. He has mm. bought into equality. He has no idea that he's a man and is his primary responsibility. He, he, he thinks two equals have climbed into bed and made an equal decision. If he really understood his role as a man, he would understand that he is most responsible for whatever goes down. And, and, and people will misunderstand that and misconstrue it and think that I'm some sexist pig, but I'm not. Women are not the equal of men. They don't share the responsibility for this irresponsible behavior. She's a woman looking for an emotional uh, connection. She's looking for coverage from a man. That man is taking, he, he's an idiot, taking advantage of her and being irresponsible to those kids because he doesn't want to respect he doesn't want to take on the responsibility of being an actual man that at the very least he should be wearing a condom at the very least he should be practicing abstinence until married he's that mentality of thinking of women as equal we both did this no y'all both didn't do it that's on you brother but you're not man enough to realize it that's my take mm. So a couple of things come to mind, Jason. One is that we live in a type of world where I had to stop for a second and question whether or not this was a real scenario because um, our culture is so desperate for attention and to go viral and to be, to be known, to, to be a name, that I don't doubt that somebody would lie about something that makes him look like a complete bum and loser just to say that he went viral. So that was the first thing that came across my mind, and, I, and that made me think about how, how far we've sort of fallen, particularly in the advent of, of social media. But in terms of the substance, right, assuming that this is legit, um, I heard him say, these are the seven that chose to keep the baby, which means there was some number that, you know, obviously chose not to, 
um, which again speaks to the level of recklessness and irresponsibility that is taking place both with him, obviously he's the common denominator, and with the women that he's he's been having sex with. And, and in some respects, he is accurately describing how people like this, like himself, think. And this this should be a warning sign, right? This should be a cautionary tale for every woman out there, right? Who thinks, oh, if I give him, you know, my my access to my body and, and we have a child together, maybe he'll stay with me. Now, part of it is we've we've fallen so far as a culture, so both in the macro and in the micro sense. I don't even know if that's what a lot of these women are looking for. I, I think in situations past, Jason, if it's a guy and a girl, they're together, they've been dating seriously two, three years, she wants him to propose, he refuses, they, she gets pregnant, she may have some reasonable expectation, okay, he's going to step up to the plate and marry me. But if you meet a guy at the club and all he says, you, you say, what's your name? And he say, you know, Frisco. Now, you know that's not his government name, but he just he give you a street name and you go home and you sleep with him. I don't assume that that woman is looking for any of the things that we typically assume women are looking for from men. And part of that is because as a culture, we have disconnected sex from its primary role of reproduction. And, and, and we have made sex a matter of recreation between consenting adults. And we assume that as long as two consenting adults are doing it, then whatever comes from that recreation is just a waste product. And, and that's how children are used. It's like the, the energy is in the recreation because every energy source has, has a, a waste product, right? You can't, you can't get away from that. So the, the, the energy is in, is in the recreational sex and the child that results, which really should be looked at as fruit of that, of that relationship, is seen as a consequence that has to get rid of, has to uh, be eliminated. So, so th this guy is, a, I think, a, a reflection of how, f how corrupt our culture has become. And in some respects, the responses that I've seen to this video um, give me some m small measure of encouragement because the vast majority of people I've seen respond to it have been critical of this guy. And I think one of the things that we need in American culture and, and even more so within black culture is to make shame biblical again. Somebody like this should never be able to show his face in public without people uh, ripping him a new one, right? Now, he's a, he's a no-name dude. He got seven kids, seven baby mamas. He's easy to make fun of. But, but if somebody like Nick Cannon shows up at, at the annual, you know, Black ex, ex, Essence Fest, he should be prepared to answer some very, very hard questions about why he's carrying himself in this way and how his how his behavior is going to affect his children and and the generations that come from his seed. And I think we need more of that in our, in our culture. Well, I want to move you on to another video. Uh, John Stewart uh, promoting his show put out a clip of a debate he was having with a guy about drag queens at libraries. And John Stewart very cleverly turns this into a discussion about guns and gun violence, mm. uses a straw man. It's completely dishonest, in my opinion. Let's watch the clip. You want further. You want to ban drag show readings to children. To my house, yes. Why? Why, why? What are you protecting? Why can we prohibit ch children from voting, those under 18 from voting? Why are you banning? Also that. Is, is that free speech? Are you infringing on that performer's free speech? They can continue to exercise their free speech, just not in front of a child. Why? Because the government does have a responsibility to protect. I'm sorry? The government does have a responsibility uh -huh. in certain instances to What's protect children. What's the leading cause of death amongst children in this country? And I'm going to give you a hint. It's not drag show readings to children. Correct, yes. So what is it? I'm presuming you're going to say it's firearms. No, I'm not going to say it like it's an opinion. That's what it is. It's firearms. More than cancer, more than car accidents. And what you're telling me is you don't mind infringing free speech to protect children from this amorphous thing that you think of. But when it comes to children that have died, you don't give a flying f to stop that because that shall not be infringed. That is hypocrisy at its highest order. And that is a straw man argument at its highest order.
Human behavior, there are limits on human behavior for mm -hmm. all sorts of reasons. Humans can't drive cars over 55 miles per hour in some places over 70, 75, whatever. A gun is not a human behavior. Drag shows and re sexualizing kids, that's a human behavior. L the number one cause of death for young people is abortion. That's mm. factually true. Point two, let's give him that gun violence is the number two. But gun violence is really bad human behavior. That gun doesn't pull the trigger by itself. That gun doesn't get angry and do something. So the government has a right and a need to limit human behavior and limiting grown men from dressing up like women and very provocatively and reading little books to kids, the government has every right to limit that behavior. And, and, and this little straw, oh, we got to outlaw guns. The man just said car accidents are number three or something like that, or it's more than he ain't trying to outlaw cars. So why is he trying to outlaw guns? John Stewart is like a, a lot of guys on the left, Jason, who for some strange reason find themselves defending, as you said, grown men dressed as caricatures of adult women, oftentimes in, in, in booty shorts and with fake breasts, you know, twerking in front of children and getting kids to put, you know, dollar bills in their G-string. So th these guys are weird. Like, there's, there's no other way to get around it. And I think part of the problem is, and this is something you touch on a lot, when, when politics becomes your religion, um, you will do anything in service of your small G God. And these guys are so committed to being anti-conservatives, that if conservatives say, hey, we don't think little kids should be, you know, or, or drag queens should be performing um, in front of little children at bars, at restaurants, and we don't think that drag queens need to be reading to kids in libraries and schools. I mean, 20 years ago, that would have been uncontroversial, but now that conservatives are leading the push against it, including in, 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 in Tennessee where you are, now there's, there's a bunch of guy, grown men, presumably heterosexual men, who find themselves saying, oh, how, how dare they infringe on the rights of drag queens? Don't they know that drag queens have a, have a right to have access to your kid? So it, it, it really is strange. Um, this is some serious, seriously strange behavior. I think any of these people, particularly the people making this argument who do have access to kids, educators, pastors, they all need to get a hard drive check. Um, because this, there's something going on. There's a, the, the spirit of perversion has been let loose on this country. Um, and I think what, you, what you're hearing from Jon Stewart um, is an unwillingness to honestly reckon with that. Uh, and I'm not sure, again, other than the politics, why else somebody would, would do this. But I, I'll say this. I think more than any single piece of legislation, the greatest victory for those who consider themselves part of the LGBTQIA2S plus community, right? What started as the gay rights movement is not Obergefell. It's not legalized gay marriage. It's not um, legalized adoption. It's, it's normativity. It's the notion that wherever you see, if you're watching a show and it has three married couples, even a conservative at a certain point says, Okay, so where's the gay couple? It's the notion that all manner of, of, of activities, of beliefs, behaviors, values, having to do with um, sex, sexual preference, or gender identity, um, that there's no way to sort of make rules to, to um, hold to different standards ar around these particular areas. So it's the notion that drag queens have a right to perform in front of children. That, that is one of the greatest victories of that particular movement. We, it has completely become normative. And, and I, I say this often, I've said it before here, I've written it, every society is gonna have a closet, right? Th there are certain things that society, societies decide to promote publicly and other things that they will allow people to practice privately, i.e. the closet. Now there was a time where you could promote your religion publicly and, and your, um, sexual preferences, particularly the, the non-normative ones, right? So two men, two women, drag, transsexualism, transvestites, 
all of that stuff was either, either kept in a certain part of town, was kept inside the confines of your home. But now the rainbow is out of the closet and the cross is in the closet. And what we are doing is having to reconcile with that as a, as a culture. So the notion that you could have value, values neutral laws is, has completely been exposed because every law is inherently moral. So the question is, which one of those two things do we want, want to be promoted publicly? And what do we want to be practiced privately? Because the closet is not big enough for both. Thank you, Delano. If you like this content, hit the likes, get in the comments, tell us what you think.